All right, so at this point, uh, I'm loading that external uh, link. I'm doing it via uh, the in-app browser feature of Cordova. This allows me to open an external link a little bit more natively to make it feel more like a real uh, app. So speaking of that, speaking of programming it more natively, I want to do something like that for the pop-up that I get about please enter your name. The way we've done it before in your JavaScript code here, that's the get name. The get name function, which ultimately line 18, line 18 uh, is a prompt, a plain old JavaScript prompt. It works, but we've got this transferred over to a real device. We have Cordova functionality that will behave more like a real native prompt rather than the JavaScript one. So I'm going to look at uh, the Cordova documentation to give myself a more of a native feeling prompt. I still had my browser open for for Cordova um, documentation and this one was in dialogues. We, we experimented with dialogues a little bit before in pop-ups where we have the JavaScript alert uh, which is a generic alert box we had the native alert, we had the native alert box that felt more like an Android alert or an iPhone alert. We have one related for a prompt. So if you go over to the Cordova plugin dialogues, we have alert confirm prompt. Remember we also did beep to make it make a, a noise. So we have prompt. We just need to learn how does this differ from the built-in JavaScript one and then make it work like how we've done before. And maybe it has other features that are cool that we can apply. So within the dialogues, the Cordova plugin dialogues, jump down to prompt. Displays a native dialog box that is more customizable than the browser's prompt. And that will work with navigator.notification.prompt. So instead of just prompt, if I do navigator.notification.prompt, it'll let me then put a custom message to enter the person's name. It'll have a callback function. What's the result of a person putting a name? And then what title do I want to put in the box? And what labels do I want for a button or more? And what default text, what sort of like uh, placeholder text do I want to appear? Message is a dialog as a string. Prompt callback is a callback function to invoke when any of the buttons, and there will be three buttons that are possible, or when the dialog is dismissed. So this will call a function that we add there. The um, syntax, though, is not with parentheses. It's a, it's a calling the name of a function, but not with the syntax of parentheses. Title of the dialog, string optional, default will say prompt. Button labels, array of strings specifying button labels. This is an array, this is an optional. For example, in square brackets, I will have a button that says OK and a button that says cancel. Those are the defaults. I can make it say great, I can make it say not great instead of the defaults. And then default text. What placeholder text? Optional, default is nothing. If I wanted to say something um, to guide the user. Prompt callback, we're gonna see that one. So basically what I want to happen is invoke the prompt method of the navigator notification of Cordova, and then the result will be the rest of what I've already done. So looking at my existing code, let's remember how we saved the name. There's a button that's going to be clicked. 
and then um, we'll run get func get name function. There's a console output. We don't need that anymore. There's a var. We don't need that anymore. We're saving the user's name in local storage. A couple of console outputs, and then we had the whole thing about well, what happens after after we uh, captured the name? Is it undefined? Is it empty? Etc. In all of these different cases, so we've got switch depending on the particular case. What are we writing on screen? There's an else. If there are any errors, we give the errors. If there are no errors, then we display it on screen. So, to change this up a little bit, we need to change this um, in a couple of ways. we need to decide a couple of things here. We have the ability to call a function um, after capturing a name. We could put the functionality of displaying the name in the function, or we can have um, just an empty function that doesn't do anything because our current code works. So. Hmm. We'll say let's see. So first let me clean up a little bit of this code. Uh, we don't need this line 16. We already know it works. We'll get rid of that. We don't need line 17. That's saving a var which is temporary. We don't need that. Uh, line 18 and 19, some more console output about what the person's name was. We don't need that. We were then displaying a very simple name, but we made it better, so we don't need that. So look at those comments. What we'll do is we will reuse our get name, and the code for this to work is. navigator.notification.prompt So previously we had simply prompt and that was saved over to local storage but here I think this is going to behave differently that's where our local that's where our callback function would come in so we'll figure that out in a moment I'm going to paste that in there And the way prompt works is we provide a few options. So the very first option is the message. OK. So in quotes, that'll be again, enter name, comma, a callback function. So we will say, um, let's, let's say, uh, got name, OK. So there will be a callback function of got name OK. Then there are uh, optionals, but we'll we'll use them. Title so comma. The it was the pro the prompt was previously just saying prompt. Um, We'll call that in quotes uh, custom, customize. So the pop up box will say customize. And make it say whatever we want, of course. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Then the next item that is optional is a list of uh, names for buttons. We can have up to three of them. So this is in, uh, in an array. So we'll say open and close square brackets. This is an array, a list of elements. And then in quotes, because they're strings, we'll say uh, save. There's the save button. There's cancel. 
and there's a third button. I don't know. I'll call it three for the moment. I just want to see what the button looks like. So we'll have save button, cancel button, three button. I'll do something else with that. I don't want to put in an automatically filled in text. Uh, I don't think it behaves the same way that I would expect it. Uh, just to test it, let's put something. Uh, John Smith. So it'll automatically say a name in that prompt. Uh, we'll have to see then if there's an auto name and we click OK, does that name get passed through or does it pass through an empty string? So we'll see. I have a feeling that it's going to pass in that name. At the very end, semicolon on that, of course. The callback, in our case, which we've called um, got name OK, the Cordova code says, OK, you've, um, you've done prompt. We had some message. We had on prompt. When there was a, when we got the name, we call on prompt. On prompt here, all that we did was, well, we're passing through an object of results. And we're popping up. You selected button. We were saying from the result object, give me the button index. So that would then say 0, 1, or 2, because we have three possible buttons. We can do some if-else stuff there, if they canceled and so forth. Um, and entered results.input1. So there's to the result object, there is an input1 box where the person types their names is called input1. So where exactly where we're saving the name is input1. That means then that in our got name OK, we would pretty much have the rest of our code all of this stuff, local storage, if else, and all of that. I guess we'll have all of that in the function got name OK. So next line, I'll give myself some space there. Function got name OK. Parentheses. They called it in the example result. I want to call it data. So there's data that came through. It could be object, result, whatever. There's data being passed through. So the rest of what's inside of get name, we need to move all of this. So in my case, line 22, where local storage starts all the way down to end curly brace, which ends my if else. I'm going to move all of that, cut and paste into got name OK. Indent that a bit. So now, none of this happens until we pressed OK. So the native method then invokes got name OK, passes data in. So that means we need to rewrite line 19. We no longer are asking for a prompt again. So that is data dot input one. That's what the example says. Let me confirm that. Uh, results dot input one. Yes. So we're passing data. So we're saying the object data, it's property input one. Save that to the local storage, and then the rest should behave. We might need to do something with the cancel event. We'll see what happens when we test it. Um, so I think that'll be good. Navigator.notification prompt a string. Comma, got name is spelled properly, customize, string, an array of button names, and a 
placeholder text. Confirm that my curly brace is there. Encompass everything. Final curly brace closes all of get name. And the rest is the same. Data dot input one. Okay. If we make a mistake, if you, anyone of you see a mistake, that's okay. I want to see my mistake in the console just so that I can figure it out just in case. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to run this in my device. I'm going to run it in my device. I'm going to load up my device inspector in Chrome just in case anything happens. And then we'll see. I expect to see the native app, uh, the native device pop up instead of the plain old JavaScript alert. And it should hopefully behave the same as before, but we'll see when mine loads up. So obviously it worked before, but the point of using something like Cordova is we want it to behave more like a real app. That alert, bo that prompt box in JavaScript kind of doesn't look like a do, doesn't really look like an Android pop-up. It's a web browser pop-up. So the whole point of using navigator.notification.prompt is that hopefully it should behave like a native Android pop-up. It won't break the illusion. Let me pull up my inspector here. Alright, so I'll go to About, I'll hit uh, Personalize, it doesn't show up here, but here it shows up pretty nice, it looks like a real Android window, it's got the basic Android colors, it says Customize at the top, it says Enter Name, it's got the box, John Smith is automatically filled in, Cancel, Save, and 3, so there's the button 3, Cancel is first, then Save, then 3, I'm going to put in a name, I'll click Save, and I'll go back, Welcome Victor. What kind of output do I get here? No output, really. I'll do that again here, personalize, put in just some gibberish for the moment, save that. Outputs to gibberish, that's fine. I'll try what happens with, okay, I'm going to cancel that. Comes back, still says Welcome John Smith, that's fine. Wait, wait, no, it's, oh, see, it went back to John Smith. Welcome, John Smith. I pressed cancel, and it accepted John Smith. Personalize, if I click save, John Smith is the default. If I save, welcome, John Smith. So doing cancel or doing save without me typing something passes through John Smith because of my, for, of my final option here. Perhaps I should not have any prompt text here, any placeholder text. And we'll see what that does. Does it bring back an empty string? Does it bring back null? We'll see. So we might have to write our if-else checks a little bit more here. I want to test this without, without the final placeholder text. I should have taken out that 3 button, now that I know what it looks like. But based on those 3, because we've got 0, 1, and 2, then we can do some if-else if button pressed equals 0, which I guess is cancel, have it do something. If button press equals 1, have it do something else. Oh, these indexes are based on whole number one. Let's note the index uses one based indexing. Okay, so I input it as an array, which starts at zero, but I guess then we deal with them starts in with one. Let's see. I'm going to put first a gibberish name. Save that displays gibberish. 
Then I'm going to personalize again, and this time just press Save. Alert. Please enter a valid name. Perfect. Well, that could be an alert of a native alert. Personalize. Press Cancel. Alert. Please enter a valid name. Okay, so both of those are saying enter a valid name. If I press button number three, alert. Please enter a valid name. And what displays is the previous name. That's good. So no matter what was typed in the box, it seems that what will return, if nothing is there, is an empty string. The way we can test this, of course, is console log data dot input one. I want to see exactly what happens with an empty. It'll probably be an empty string, or it might be undefined or something. And the documentation then says button index. Okay, so we can do console log data dot button index. It'll just kick back the number of what the person pressed. Based on that, we might rewrite our if else. Alright, so that's loading in my device. I'll inspect it. My test here is I'll put in Andrea. Save that. So it said, okay, you typed Andrea and you pressed one, which is OK, the OK button. It's in the order of save, cancel, and three. Back on the home screen says, welcome, Andrea. I go back to personalize again. This time, I'll simply cancel. The result is that I press the cancel button, which is item two, and it kicks back an empty string. So not typing, so putting cancel automatically pulled, kicks back an empty string. That's why we're tripping over here. Local storage username is empty. We've saved an empty string. And it pops up with please enter a valid name.
right, so dealing with a cancel that would be button index 2 We might do an else if here before the if local storage is undefined. If before that, we might check first. Well, first of all, which button was pressed? If the cancel button was pressed, we do nothing. If save button was pressed, then check if what was saved was empty, undefined, etc. So let me give this a try. Obviously I didn't have this this planned, but that's good so we can kind of see it live. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. Else if before that our first if. So I'm going to have a check first to see what button was pressed. The original if then has become an else if. Check one thing and check another. So what I'm trying to check here is uh, data dot button index is equal to triple equals uh, to two. That would mean that it was the cancel button. So, I guess just some console output, user cancel. We don't need to tell, we don't need to scold the person when they click cancel, just, it just canceled. So if button index had been 2, which is my cancel button, do nothing, but show me some output. Okay, if, if that wasn't then um, the case, let's check then then it must have been a save. If it wasn't a cancel, it was a save. So the next we'll check, it, was it undefined, was it empty, and so forth. And then we have the pop-up of enter a valid name. Let's see. So uh, be very careful here, of course. Make sure you've rewritten this a little bit like I had here. It was previously if local storage. Make sure now it's else if curly brace which closes if and you gotta check that's a triple equals. Alright, let's see.
Okay, that seems to have done it. I did type a name, but I canceled. So that then said user canceled, and it ignored what I typed. I typed a new name, but I canceled it. Let me do it again with absolutely no name. Personalize and simply cancel. We have an empty string. That was button 2, cancel. I got user canceled, and on screen it still says my original name. So this code here worked. First we're checking for a cancellation. If that happens, do nothing. Okay, if it wasn't canceled, it must have been saved. If it was saved, then check what was input. If any of those were invalid inputs, then let the user know enter a valid name. So trying to uh, enter an empty, just with an empty string with save, it says enter a valid name. So that part still works. One weird thing I just noticed is if I quit the app completely, even though I had saved the name, the name is not retrieving. And that's because we moved local storage into a local scope function. Get name, get name OK. All right, so the way to fix that, if you keep beta testing it and all of that, you realize that we uh, save local storage, which happens inside of a function, inside of a function. So therefore, show name can't find local storage username because we've saved local storage name in a deeper level than the original get name. So the way to fix that is toward the end of get name OK, before the close of get name OK, note here, and get name OK. Before the end of get name OK, I use return 
and then local storage object. So the, the name that I saved into local storage in the function get name okay gets pushed back to the higher scope with return. Our function of get name okay is returning that object so it can be used in other parts of the scope. So now that that gets returned out of the confines of the local function, show name can access it. I just tested it and I'm able to have it automatically retrieve the name after I force quit the app. So we'll uh, wrap up the main lecture in just a moment, but what we did here is we used the Cordova native prompt to make something more Android-like when we personalize. It really feels more like a real Android pop-up. Um, when I click Save and I get the basic JavaScript alert of enter a valid name. I could then figure out, well, let me use the native alert pop-up. I'm still using the old alert pop-up. And so I um, could research then and say, okay, let me figure that out. Let me use the native alert pop-up instead of the JavaScript alert. We're getting out of time, so it might be extra credit. Extra credit for a class with no grades. So if you can get that um, alert to be native, that'd be nice. We might do it later, we might not, it works, but at this point I kind of thought, well, let's use the native prompt, and that worked eventually. And there's the code. I'm going to put my code, of course, in the network folder very soon, so you can compare my code with your code, and we'll do some lab time. Any general questions on what we've talked about today? Okay, so I'm going to save this, I'm going to end the main lecture, and we'll do it again on Thursday.